name of the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let's put that first slide up there. And uh, we're going to get going into the word. We're going to pray and go believe God. Does anybody ever, does anybody know what this is here? You know, <laughs> you're in the frying pan. That's bad, right? How many would be, if you're cooking in the frying pan, that's really bad. But you know what? When you fall out of the frying pan and you go into the fire, it gets worse. Right? You know, you ever been there when you're just like, Lord, it's, it seems like it's bad, but then all of a sudden it got worse. But I want you to know here, uh, see what I'm going to talk about today. And we're just, we're trusting in the Lord, right? C collectively together, we're looking to the Lord from bad to worse, but God is working. Everybody say from bad to worse. Everybody say, but God is working. Now, it's interesting, over the past few weeks, we were talking about submitting to the will of God. We talked about how Jesus prayed. He said, Father, if you be willing, take this cup away from me. And, and uh, if you weren't here Wednesday, and I'd actually just continued the teaching on Wednesday, we talked about it. And the cup is, there are certain situations, there are certain things that God leads us through that are not comfortable. Sometimes we're in the center of God's will, and it's the hardest place that you and I could be. And so this is kind of going to spring from it. Look at Carly. Let's go to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter. We're going to start with verse 22, but we're going to read it in the New Living Translation. I just want you to see this today, and we're going to get some things. Amen? Everybody say, the Lord's going to speak to me. Father, I just thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in this place. I thank you, Lord God, that our eyes are opened up by the Holy Ghost. And Father, we thank you that we're going to get that word. We're going to get that revelation today that's going to alter, help us adjust. Father, move forward. We thank you that you're sending your word this morning and bringing healing and deliverance to those that are here and those precious people that are so faithfully watching. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Notice what it says here. It says, uh, verse number 22, and this is the New Living Translation. Let me see, make sure I got it right. He says, immediately after this, Jesus made his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent them, sent the people away. One of the translations that I had here literally said, it said he insisted, and I thought it was the New Living. It's kind of weird. It doesn't come up. It says he insisted that they get in the boat. He was ministering all day and he insisted. He said, guys, get into the boat and cross to the other side. Now look at verse number 23. He says, uh, he goes, uh, he says, and when, and when uh, uh, Kylie, we'll just do it in the New Living Translation. We'll just do it in the New Living. He goes, he's, he's, Jesus is doing his job. He's sending them. He went on the hills and he prayed. Am I in the right? It seems so weird today. And, he, and night fell. He was there alone. Verse 24. He says, meanwhile, notice this. He, he, no, notice this. Jesus sends the disciples. He sends them. They have a divine appointment, divine direction. You can't get any more of a leading than this. He sends them out and he says, go over there and cross the water. He sends the, the people away. He's praying. And, and meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble. Is it possible sometimes God will direct us into a place where it's like, we're in trouble here, but we're in the very center of God's will. He goes, for there is a strong wind that ris risen and they're, they're fighting the heavy waves. Verse number 25, it was three o'clock in the morning. Now, how many know at 3 o'clock in the morning, your mind can start playing some real heavy tricks on you, yeah. right? They're in the middle. They're, they're, these are experienced fishermen. They're trying to get across the water. They're fighting the waves. Jesus is not there with them. And all of a sudden, they look out, and they see somebody walking on the water. I don't know about you. If you're not accustomed to seeing people walking on the water, if you see somebody walking on the water while you're battling a storm... You know, and you can't really make it out clearly. So they see, they, that, that could cause a little anxiety, right? Yeah. Right? Wouldn't it kind of freak you out a little bit? Yeah. Has anybody in this room seen anybody walk on the water? No. All right. So look at verse number 26. And so the disciples saw him, and they were screaming in terror. Why? Because they were thinking he was a ghost. Now get the picture. Now remember, he, Jesus insisted. Jesus told them to do this. This, they are in the center of God's will in the midst of the storm. It's bad. And so now they think they're seeing a ghost. And so verse number 27, we know the story. Jesus spoke to them, said, it's all right. He said, I'm here. How many know that's what Jesus will say in the midst of your storm? Amen. How many know we got to listen to that, right? Yes. That God will never forsake us, never leave us, right? He said, don't be afraid, verse 28. And Peter still had some question. He said, Lord, Lord, I know it's you. I can recognize your beard. No. He said, Lord, if 
It's really you. Was Peter really confident that it was the Lord? No. no. Right? Can you see it? Can God work with our questions in the middle of our storm? He said, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on water. Verse number 29. All right, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat, walked on the water toward Jesus. This is a classic case of getting out of the fire pan, fire, uh, frying pan into the fire. Yes. Think about it. He's in the boat. It's bad. It's a bad situation. Water's coming into the boat. They think they're going to sink. And now Jesus tells them, hey, get out. The thing that's troubling you, the wind, the waves, the storm, I'm telling you to come to me now. Walk on the water. Get out of the fire, Pran, and get into the, get into the fire. Amen. Are there times that God will have us go from what seems to be bad to worse, Amen. but God is still working? Yes. How many remember the story of Lazarus? Yes. Remember that? They go, to, they go to him and said, you know, Jesus, your friend is sick. He's about ready to die. Jesus says, well, the sickness is not unto death. Not only did Jesus not respond immediately, he didn't tell those guys and give them any kind of hope. I'm going to come run there right now. I'm ready to go. It was God's will to delay. Not only did he let him get, get sicker, he died. Not only did he let, wait for him to die, he waited for him. He was stinky dead. Is it possible God will allow us to walk through situations that go from bad to worse. Yes. But God is working. Yes. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. We're going to start with verse number one. A couple of Wednesdays ago, I kind of, we're going to just blow through the first part of the story, but, I, but we got to do it because this is the thought here about going from bad to seemingly worse. Look at uh, Kings. We, again, if you weren't here, I think it wasn't this Wednesday. It was two Wednesdays ago. And you can look at these online. It, it was a message I taught on Wait for it. Those that were here, we talked about how waiting for the word of the Lord. But I just want you to just see this in a different light. And then we're going to move on to the next story. It says, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilad, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, he said, there's not going to be any dew or rain for three years, but according to the word of the Lord. Now, the reason there wasn't any rain is because these people, the nation of Israel, was living a comp compromised life. They weren't serving the Lord, and the curse was on them. If you read in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the blessing of the Lord comes, and part of the blessing was rain. When you're obedient to God, there's rain. Not only natural rain, but there's spiritual rain. And Ahab was a horrible king. The Bible says he was worse than all the kings that were there. He married a woman by the name of Jezebel. And I wish I would have got I, her name just is incredible, just horrible. And her name meant... Uh, uh, um, I don't, want, I don't want to misquote it, but um, just look up her name and then maybe I'll do it sometime. Just horrible. It was like, just horrible, but worshiping Baal and all this stuff. And so here's this king of Israel married her. So Elijah, by the mercy, comes to the king and says, it's not going to rain. Verse number two. And so the Lord says, and the word of the Lord came to him. How many are glad God will give you a word? Amen. When there's going to be a famine, he says, verse number three. He says, listen, you go down and turn eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. Is it possible that God could lead you to hide? Yes. Most people go, that's not God. Why would God tell me to do that? God's able to protect me. Why don't I just put myself out there? No, God gave him a word, hide. Are there times God gives you a run word? Yes. I mean, if you go to the New Testament again, again, everything's the word. When it talks about how that Paul was in a city and they were going to kill him. And so what did Paul do? He, they let him down in a basket in the middle of the night, disguised him to get him out of the city. Can God give you a run and hide word? Yes. Hey, if God gives me one, I'm running and I'm hiding. So he says, you go hide yourself by that brook that is before Jordan. Now look at verse number four. He goes, and it shall be that you're going to drink of the brook and I've commanded the ravens to feed you there. He said, you're going to go down there. And this is what's going to happen. Those ravens are going to feed you and the brook is going to give you the drink that you need. Verse number five. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. And so he went and did. Everybody say went and did. Amen. According to the word of the Lord. And he, he dwelt there. He, he's living there by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. So he's doing the word of the Lord. And verse number six. 
See, when we're obedient to the word of the Lord, we're at the right place at the right time, you're going to hook up with your blessing. The ravens come, they give him bread and fish in the morning, bre uh, bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank from the brook. How many think this is a good thing? Yes. This is a supernatural, wonderful thing. It's wonderful. God's working. Everybody say, God's working. God's working. So, but verse number seven, it says, and uh, it says, and it came to pass after a while, what happened? Notice these words, after a while. I want you to see it. Slide number eight. After a while, what happens? The brook dried up. Have you ever been in a place, you're in the divine will of God, you're there, you're doing what God wants you to do, and all of a sudden it seems like, hey, wait a minute, this brook is drying up. It says the end of time. The word after means the end of time or place, right, or period, the end of something, the, or to make an end by cutting off. It's starting. He's looking at the brook, and it says the brook, after a while, the brook dried up. And he, and he talks about a period of time. So he's there, he's there, he's there. After a period of time, it says after a while. Everybody say after a while. After a while. The brook, look at the uh, number nine. This is slide nine. He says the brook dried up. Look at the word for dried up. It means to, it's a, to wither. It's a, it's a process. You're watching this thing happen. It's, it's like wetlands that dry up and the fish and the vegetation die and, and it's starting to get stinky. Like his place of comfort wasn't so comfortable anymore. He's like, man, it's starting, it's starting to smell here. It's a rotting matter. It means uh, the word metaphorically was used to be ashamed or confused or disappointed. So, but he's in the center of God's will. He's where God wants him to be. The brook is drying up. He's looking at this. He's watching this. And as we talked about a couple of Wednesdays ago, at this point, most people are tempted to take matters into their own hand. Right? I'll do this. I'll do that. But the prophet of God knew that he couldn't move until God gave him a clear word. If God leads you in, God will lead you out. Right? Notice, go, go to verse number, go to the next verse. And it says, and after a while, the brook dried up. And the word, so the word of the Lord came to him. Everybody said, the word of the Lord came to him. And he says, it came to him saying, verse number nine, it said, arise. Everybody say, arise. arise. Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I've commanded a widow woman that to, there to sustain you. Now, now, this is where it goes seemingly bad to worse, naturally. And we're going to see in a moment why. Because it, it, this, 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 you know, he's here. He's seeing the supernatural blessing of God. It's getting worse. It's getting bad. And he says, the Lord says to him, arise and go to Zarephath. And, and the thing was that this woman here, in this place here, she wasn't a Jewish person. Matter of fact, Jesus made mention of it in the New Testament. He said that there was many, many widow women that were in Israel, but the prophet was sent to her. And he said there were many lepers in Israel, but then God only healed Naaman. Right. And Jesus was making a very clear statement there that, you know, here's a woman. She wasn't even a, but she was a, a person, as we're going to see, she feared God. Right. I know God will meet you if you're a Cornelius or you're this woman or you're a Naaman. God will meet you if you honor his word. Yeah. And he says, he, he's hidden there. He doesn't know this woman. It's not like he said, go to your grandmother's house, go to your family, go to a, a rich woman's house. He says, go to this, he says, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. He said, I've commanded a widow woman there to feed you. Notice this here. I want you to see it here. Slide number 11. I want you to see it. He says, Zarephath means refinery. Zarephath means refinery, and Zidon means hunting. So it does, does, just the name itself doesn't sound that good. So God's saying, go to a place that it's a refinery where, where metals are processed. It's a hot place. And it's a place where there's a lot of hunting. So just the name itself doesn't sound like a really comfortable place to go. But look at the, 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 the next slide, my dear sister. And it says, but he, says, but he said, go to Zarephath. And so he's here. I wanted you to see this. He's here at the brook Chirith or Kirith. And he had to go all this way up here, all the way here to there. Zarephath was about... 85 to 100 miles from Cherith. This isn't like go here and go to Tishbe or cross the water and go to Samaria. You know, this was a, this was a word that he got from God. It seems like, this, and, and he didn't say go to the rich woman here. He says walk 8,500 miles by faith all the way to here. And when you get here, 
there's going to be a widow woman. As soon as she said widow, he knew. This woman doesn't got a husband. For the most part, she probably didn't got any money. But th this is the step of faith. He's here. He's comfortable. He's here. It's a bad situation. It's starting to get worse. The brook's drying up. The word of the Lord comes to him and says, he says, arise, arise, rise, go, all, go here, travel 85, 100 miles. And these ain't smooth roads. You can see it. There's mountains, there's rivers, over the river and through the woods, right all here. Are you guys hearing this? Look at the word for arise. This is what that word arise means. Carly, you, you, you know, I think it's the next, the slide couple before. The word arise so when he says, arise, go to Zerifeth, the word rise means, hey, you got to stir up yourself. You got to rise up. You're, you're little, even though you're seeing the brook dried up, you got to stand up. You got to come on the scene. You got to carry out this word. Why? Give effect to this word. Move with it. Per become more powerful with it. Be fixed with it. Persist with the word of God. Hallelujah. So what was God telling him to do? Hey, man, this is a hard thing you got to do. This isn't easy. You're getting out of the fire pan, right? And you're going into the fire. And you're, you're going to walk 85 to 100 miles. Some people barely walk three miles a day, two miles a day. We're talking, we talk about if he had an Apple watch on, I don't even know how many steps he would have. This is huge. Are you guys getting this? Yes. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. So see again, but it's his God. This is what I want you to see. Sometimes God leads you to places to do things. Go to the brook. I'm going to command the, the ravens to feed you. The, the, the brook's going to sustain you. God's going to lead us to do things that don't make sense to us. Right? That's when we walk by faith. So many times we try to figure it out. We go, well, I'm going to figure it out. I got this all figured out. Listen, when you think you got it figured out, you don't got it figured out. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean. Don't rely. Don't trust. Don't depend on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. And he'll give you a creative idea. He'll give you a creative thought. He'll give you a direction. And maybe it won't make sense to you. But if you'll walk that 85 miles and 100 miles, whatever it is, you're going to start seeing the blessing of the Lord. You're going to have to get out of maybe the fire or the frying pan to get into a hotter spot. But I'll tell you what, that's where God is. Are you guys hearing me this morning, church family? So he says, arise. He says, I've commanded a widow woman there to, to sustain thee. Now, um, let's go to, um, we're here, verse. And dwell there, for I've commanded a widow woman. To stay. No, no, these are the words I wanted you to say. He goes, he says, arise, go to Zerifith, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. In other words, remain there, stay there. He says, behold, I've commanded a widow woman this, to sustain you. Now, I want you to see the word for behold. This is a great word. The word behold, slide 13. How many love the word? Amen. We are getting it today. He said, I've, I've, I've behold, and this is the cool thing about it. It's a very interesting word. It means a looking at what is here. The pictograph of this word means this. You're looking towards something continually. And he says, behold, I've commanded, ordered, appointed, or commissioned this woman to feed, to feed you. In this particular case, I believe that, that what was happening here, the, the prophet of God was getting a, a mini vision in his heart. God was causing him to see something there. Something was arising in his spirit, and he was looking toward it. He started to see, he says, he says listen, don't look at the river. Don't look at the, the brook. Don't look at the ravens. Right now, you've got to start walking with your inner sight. That's what walking by faith, not by sight. Inside, he started to see something. He started to get this mini vision in his heart. He started, the Lord says, look, 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 look. Don't look over there. Don't look at the dried up brook. Don't look at the ravens there. Don't, don't, don't look over there. He said, behold, look, see, look at, look, look. Something's happening inside your heart. You're starting to see something. This has been multiple times in my life where all of a sudden it just seems like, you know, all this looks like this, all this looks bad. But if you're hearing the voice of the Lord, God's word will start painting pictures inside of your heart. You start to see something. Something will start to arise. And in this particular case, he started to go, hey, he's, he started to see a widow woman. <laughs> it's hard to say that without laughing. A widow woman. It sounds like a little woman. A widow woman. Right. He started to see something. 
This is how God works with you and me. All of a sudden, inside your heart, you're starting to, you're starting to see it. You start to see yourself driving a better car. You start to see yourself living in a better home. You start seeing your family blessed. You start seeing your finances blessed. You start to see it. 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 You, you got to behold it. If all you're seeing is what, you, naturally, you'll never get where God wants you to get. You got to start seeing that inner vision. That's what it means to walk by faith, not by sight, not by what we see, but what we're getting here. Yes. Yes. Amen. You got to start seeing it inside. And, 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 and trust me, church family, this is hard because all we see is what we see sometimes and our, 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 what's around us. And, you know, and if you keep focusing over here, you're going to miss it. You want to get that word. Say, Lord, speak to me. We want to be like the prophet Habakkuk when he said, Lord, he goes, I'm going to stand on my watch and see what you'll say to me. We want to see what God's saying to us. Yes. Are you hearing me, church family? Go back to the scripture, my church family. We just, we're excited this morning. Is this the right word for you? It's good for me. Yes. He said, arise, get thee to Sarah. I got nothing more. This is it. <laughs> There's no flipping the cards. This is it, all right? <laughs> Such as I have. He, he said, behold, I've commanded, and it's very interesting, a widow woman there to sustain thee. Notice the word for sustain, slide number 14. I want you to see it. It means, he said, I've commanded this widow woman to sustain you, to, to support you, to nourish you. It means to supply. It means to provide what is needed to make someone or something whole or complete. In other words, God's saying, because you know what? There's somebody here I've commanded to help you, to sustain you. She's going to be an instrument that God's going to use. The interesting thing about it was she had no clue. And we're going to see this in a moment. God said, I've commanded this woman to, to sustain you, to nourish you, to help you. And, and we're going to see in a moment, she had no clue. How many people in your future as of yet, have no clue that they're going to be vessels that God's going to use. They're going to be connections that God's going to use. Hallelujah. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. We just want to get it. She says, he goes, rise, travel all this way, go there. I've, I, I've already commanded, and again, we're going to see this woman had no clue. <laughs> I commanded a widow woman there to sustain you, to, to nourish you, to bring completeness to you. Carly, put that last part of that definition up. I want them to see it. I, I, it. It says, to make someone or something whole or complete. How many realize that sometimes, you know, we're trying to do it all by ourselves. We're trying to figure it out all by ourselves. But how many know God's got people, places, connections that are going to help you? Yes. On the way. Are you guys getting this this morning? Now go, go back, go to verse 10. You guys are getting it. Hallelujah. So, so what did he do? He arose, amen, yes. and said, I'll stay another day here. No, yeah. he arose and went to Zarephath. Notice what the word arose is. I want you to see it. Slide number 10. How many love the word? Yes. He arose and went. The word arose, how many know something? This is what you got to stir up. You got to start stirring up yourself. When God gives you that word, right? You can't keep looking at what you're seeing. You got to start stirring up yourself. Say, okay, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready to run. You're going to carry out the word. It's going to cause it to be effective. You're going to persist it. You got, your, you got the word of the Lord. Amen. What's more precious? Nothing is more precious than getting a clear directive of, from God. Yes. Right? When you get a directive from the Lord, everything else will fall into place. Yes. So sometimes you're like, Pastor, I'm, listen, that's why we got to say, Lord, clear my heart out. Let it be clear. Not my will be done. I just want what you want. And when you get to your heart that it's blank and your heart that it's clear, then God can speak to you what he wants to speak to you. So many times we're persisting and trying and pushing with our thoughts, our desires, and our plans. And we got to come back to that scripture. Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. Because when God gives you a word, even though it seems crazy, doesn't make any sense, this didn't make any sense, but I'm here to tell you, that's where the blessing is. Are you guys hearing me? So he arose and he went and he went... Uh, to go back to the scripture a second. He said he rose and went to Zarephath. Notice the word went. I love this, this word here. To go, right? That's what the word means, go or went. But I like this last part. One who walks for another. How many know that we are God's instrument? We're God's body. We're God's voice. We're God's hands. When God gives us a word, we're walking for God. When God, like Pastor was talking, when you be a blessing and you're being a blessing to the household of God and you're doing it, you're doing it in Jesus' name. You're acting on his, on, on his behalf. 
Are you hearing me, church family? Yeah. Right? So, when, so when, we're, when God gives us the word, we're not doing our word. We're walking for another. We're walking for God. Yes. And that's what he was doing. He was fill, fulfilling the purpose and the plan of God. Go back to the scripture. So he rose and, he, 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 and when he went to Zarephath, again, 85 miles. 100 miles. He might have had to stash some of that flesh, you know, put some aside for the, the days before he went and said, I got a peck up of something here, you know. And, and, and notice this. And he says, and he says it's in a little different word. And he comes to the city, and when he came to the gate of the city, notice these next four words. Behold the widow woman. It's a little different, little different nuance of this. Actually, it's, it's, it is the same word. It's the same Hebrew word. When he says, behold, behold. Look at slide 16. Behold the, the widow woman. It, 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 he, he, again, the same thought. Looking toward, looking toward something continuing. So when he saw her, when he saw the widow woman, he already saw her in his heart. Go back to the scripture. I want you to see it, my dear friend. He says, he goes, he went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, behold, there was that woman. Somebody said, did, did he get every detail of the woman? Every feature? Did he see her hair? Maybe, maybe not. But sometimes, sometimes God leads us in steps. God said, there, he, there's a widow woman. So he starts, so he's got that in his spirit. But when he went there, when he got to that Zarephath, he, 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 all of a sudden when he saw her, because he was at the right place. He already took a step of obedience, right? He's there. And all of a sudden, God gave him, he, he saw it. He like it came alive to him and said, there she is. That's the one. That's the one. Now, again, he might have saw it way back and saw her with clarity. Or it could have been, God said, a widow woman. He, he had a picture of a, just a widow woman in his heart. But when he got there, all of a sudden, there was, like the, the, there was that spark. There was that connection. There, was, there it is. There it is. There it is. How many of we got to wait for those there it is moments in our life? Like when you're looking for a job and you're looking for different things, don't just go, well, I just want to do whatever I want to do or who's going to give me the most money. You want and you're believing those, those, boom, those, 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 those moments where you just go, no, I know I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now. Right. Doesn't mean I'm going to be here forever, but bless God, I'm at the right place at the right time. Why? Because I'm waiting on the Lord to go, there it is. Yeah. There it is. When Adam saw Eve, he said, whoop, whoop, there she is. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. There it is. He didn't have to say, well, what kind of bank account does she have? What he, he just knew. There it was. There it was. Could God do that for you and me? Yes. Absolutely. So notice this now. Again, it seems like a bad situation. It doesn't make any sense. Naturally, it doesn't make any, We're telling a story. It doesn't make any sense. Right? right? You get, a guy's getting fed by birds. Brooks drying up. Walk 100 miles. You don't know anybody in the town. There's a widow. A widow woman's going to be there. But notice this. He rose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, it said, Behold, the widow woman, was, she was gathering up sticks. And he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. <laughs> he called her. Notice this word for called. I want you to see it. Slide number 17. How many love the word of the Lord? So he sees her there and he, he called her. He called to her. This word in the Hebrew was used, the gathering of men. It's the meeting of bringing together of people or objects by arrangement. So when he called her, he called to her. He's calling her to him. He said, calling her. He's calling out to her. And what, what that means to me is uh, this is where you engage the blessing. This is where you start to go, okay, I'm here. I'm at the right place. There she is. But if he wouldn't have said anything, nothing would have happened. He had to engage the blessing. You have to, right? You got to activate. You got to say, I'm, she, he started, he calls out to her. Go, to, go back to the scripture, my dear friend. How many love the word? Amen. He called out to her and he, and notice this, and he, he says, hey. Now they get it, get it now. God works in steps and stages. He calls out to her, he says, I pray, give me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. This is, he's engaging. He's engaging. Just, he's throwing a little, he's throwing an easy lob to her. She's going to get, can, can, you, can you just get me a little water? Can you just get me a little water in a vessel? I'm so thirsty. I need something to drink. And then verse number 11, it says this. As she was going, 
Now see, this woman had no clue that God had ordained and commanded and ordained her to supply for the prophet. But God's working with her. But so the prophet speaks to her and says, hey, hey, can you, can you give me some water? And as she was going, as, as she was obedient, as she was obedient with the word of the prophet there, just that little simple thing, as she's obedient in that little step, she's going to get the prophet water, God gives her another step. He said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So many times we want the next step, but if you're not obedient with the little things that God's telling you and I to do, you'll never get the next step. She will never get to the provision, the blessing of three years living free if she didn't start out with that little step. Right? He's, cause just get it. This is how God works. He's just a little thing. Hey, will you do that for me? Could you, could you give, give me just a little water? Oh, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll, I'll do that. And as she's going... This is it. This is a key. As she was going, as she was obedient to that one little step, another word came. Some of us are just waiting for God to do everything for us. We're just, right? We're just, well, why don't God just do it? Why don't he just do it? Why don't he? He's God. But, no, because there's a process. There's things that you and I learn when we go through these things. It's faith. It's called growing. It's called trusting. And as she was going, notice this, and he's, he says, hey, why, why you're going? Uh, give me a morsel of bread in your hand. Now, notice the word for morsel. I want you to see it. Uh, verse 18, or slide 18. A morsel, he, he's not asking for a lot. How many know God works where your faith level is? He said, he, and this is where, and this is in every area, whether it's giving. Some people are like, well, I can't, I can't uh, tithe. My goodness, uh, um, uh, if I do that, I'll be broke. Or, you know, when you start where you are, you start, you start going. Before you know it, you're going to be beyond the tithe, right? You'll be trusting the Lord. And we're, we're blessed here. We have great givers, faithful givers. But he said, just, just give me a morsel. It means fragment. Just give me a bit. How I many know God doesn't want all, all you know, just a, just a piece of bread. The word is like, it means a hole. A hole that is made in the bread by pressing, also a morsel as the hole that has been removed from the bread by pinching out a piece. So you're making a hole in the bread. He goes, you're making your bread. You just, just, just give me just a, just a little bit. Just, just give me, just, just give me just a little bit. These are, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but this is a test. It almost seems unreasonable. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. I want you to see it. How many love the word? He says, he said, uh, she, she says, he says, he, he says, listen, you just, just, just. While you get me some water, could, could just, 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 just a little pin, just, just a little, just a little bit, just a little, just, just a little bit. Just can you get just a little bit, just a little bit. Now look at verse number twelve. Now here's this woman had some faith, and then she had a heart for God. This is where this is why God could bring her to her. She wasn't serving Baal. She, she turns around and says to him, she knew he was a prophet. She says, "As the Lord thy God, as Jehovah thy Elohim liveth, I have not a cake." but a handful of meal in my barrel and I got a little oil and a cruise. He says, behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. This is a, she's in a bad situation. Yeah. You can see this multiple uh, angles of this. The prophet, he's trust God's going to supply for him, but God's working on her. And she's in a bad spot. And, but she was a servant of Jehovah. She loved the Lord. She said, as the Lord your God lives, he goes, hey, amen. I got nothing. All I got is a little bit here, a little bit of oil. I'm just going to go make it. I'm going to dress it. And, and me, we're, this is our last meal. We're down to our last meal. Prophet of God, this is it. There's no more runway. There's no more rope. We're done. Have you ever felt like that? Where you're like, I'm done. I'm at the end. I have no more emotion. I have no more strength. I have no more oomph. I have no more, uh, uh, uh. I feel like I'm flatlining. You're ready for a miracle. Yes. Jesus likes those things. Yes. He's not waiting for you just to die. He wants you to get, so you're so stinking dead that you know that whatever happens, it won't be you. It won't be a Friday the 13th movie or one of those, you know, resurrection of these. No, 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 it's going to be the Lord doing it. That's right. Amen. Are you hearing me? I tell you, when you come to the end of your runway, when you come to the place where you have no more, when you're truly weak and you're done, and you're, you're going to honor that little word. God, God's got somebody coming to you. God's going to send, you know, we need those, those words to come yes. to us. In the time, you know, we say, Lord, what's your word to me right now? Yes. 
What do you want me to do right now? What, what do I have to do? What, do, what are you saying to me, God? What, Lord, I, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to eat my last little meal. And me and my son, we're going to die. He says, he says, she says, man, all I got is a handful of cake, a little bit of oil. I'm going to gather, t- I got two sticks. That's it, just two sticks. That's all. She didn't have enough for a big fire. She said, I got just two sticks, man. I'm going to go and dress it. And me and my son, we're going to eat and die. Look at verse number 13. This is the God that we serve. Hallelujah. And Elijah said unto her, what's the first thing? Yeah. Well, you think she was afraid? Yes. Absolutely. This woman's ready to eat and die. This is it. This is her last meal. Whatever sustenance she gets, that whatever nourishment she gets off this little bit that she's eating now, it's, it's over. After a couple days, she's dying. Three, four, five days, well, however long. And so he tells her, fear not. Notice the word for fear. I want you to see it. Slide number 19. He said, don't, the word fear means be afraid. But it's interesting. The word is used of the throwing of the finger to show a direction to walk or live. So it's like the throwing of an arrow, like you're aiming an arrow. Fear, fear, he says, don't fear. Don't let fear direct your life. Don't let fear show you the direction to walk. Don't be moved and motivated by your fear. Don't let the fear be the arrow that's pointing you to what you're aiming at. He said, no, fear not. Don't fear no more. Don't let fear dictate to you. Why? Because it'll rob you from the blessing that God has for you. Fear not. Go back to the scripture. He said, fear not. Go and do. This is how cool God is. He says, go and do as you said. But make me thereof a little cake first. (laughs) And bring it to me. And then, then he said, after, everybody say after. Uh-huh. See, this is where most people miss it. They put themselves first. Why was the tithe such a beautiful thing in the scriptures? And again, we, we have wonderful givers. So I mean, there's no kind of, is the tithe was the first fruits. Like when we get our, we get our, first thing I do is give God, these, whatever I get paid, here it is, Lord. Yes. Separate. Why? You put God first. We don't go, well, let's see, how, how's our bills? What do we spend this week? What can we give? No, 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 no. You give God first Hallelujah. and he'll bless the rest. Right? He said, he said, but make me there of a little, just, he said, just a little bit. And that's like the tithe. God didn't say, give me 90% and I'll, you keep 10. <laughs> right? The God said, give, bring, bring 90, 10% little. And he said, just, just make me, he says, but make me a little cake first and bring it to me. And after make for you and your son. Now, if this was today, he would have been on the news. 60 minutes, dateline. <laughs> minister trying to take and scandal, you know, right? Take the, the little cake that this woman has. The fake news. The fake news, right, right? <laughs> just going to just, just right? going to take the cake. <laughs> we need, right? Be all over the news, right? Mm-hmm. Pastor Michael, how dare you take those people's, how dare you? <laughs> Notice this here. I, I want you to see it, guys. Stay with me. We're almost done. He says, and I know you're with me. He says, and, and do, he says, do as you said. Go do what you said. Make your little cake. Feed your son. He says, but make me there a little cake first. I want you to see the Hebrew word for the word but, okay? Look at slide number 20. How many love the word? The word but here is the Hebrew word. Again, again, I just felt, impr- when I study, I just break down every little word. I, uh, I mean, literally, I go through, just go through everything, you know? And whatever speaks to me, maybe this doesn't speak to you like it did to me. But the word but means this, surely or only, right? The pictograph of this word, it's the opening of a seed. When the seed opens, the roots begin to form the base of the plant by growing down into the soil. The plant rises out of the ground, forming the stalk of the plant. A tall tree can only stand tall and firm because of the strong root system which supports it. The word but wasn't just surely or only. He said, listen, when you do this first, you don't realize you're opening a seed. This is going to go down. It's going to produce some roots. And God's going to cause this thing to grow. And it's going to be a big tree that's going to stand tall and, and strong. He says, if you'll do this, it's going to help you support the blessing that's going to come your way. He said, but he said, so go do what you do. He said, but he says, listen, he said, when you're doing this, you got that old life over there. All that's happening over here. He said, listen, when you do this, he says, but make it, give, give God first. Give, give it to the Lord first. He says, it's, open, it's the opening of the seed. It's going to start growing. Things are going to develop. Things are going to start rising up. 
We just think it's just a natural throw. No, when you do this, when you sow, when you're a blessing, when you do what God tells you to do, it's opening the door for a new beginning. Things are starting to happen. If you want the new beginning, Lord, speak to me in the fire. And when you do that, all of a sudden it opens a door. It's like the seed, it's starting to open up and it's starting to develop and it's growing. And he says, but this isn't just like any seed. It's gonna grow and it's gonna put roots down deep and it's gonna be able to support all the fruit and all the blessing that's gonna come your way. Are you hearing me? Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. He said, Elijah said, don't fear. Don't let fear direct you. I, I know you're feeling fear right now. I, all you're seeing is death, gloom, and destruction. He said, no, no, don't let it direct you. He said, but go and do what you said. But, 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 it's going to be an opening. It's going to be a start of a new life for you. Yeah. Give me a little cake first. Yeah. Notice the word first. I want you to see it. Slide number 21. The word first means the beginning. Yeah. It's the head of a space such as the head of a river or... Time such as an event. What does it mean? He said, give it to me first. And when you're doing this, not only is it the root going down and it's the seeds opening, but you're, you're opening the head of a river. The river is going to start flowing in your life. Yes. How many want a new beginning? How many want a river to start flooding and flowing in your life? Yes. He said, give it to me first. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. He said, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me a little cake first. Bring it to me. After. Everybody say after. After, after make for you and your son. There's so many principles. Seek God's kingdom first. In the book of Haggai, when they were building their houses and doing all their stuff, and they were neglecting the... Again, I, I, this is not an offering. Please, I don't want you to think, but it's, it's hard not to talk. When they were neglecting the house of God, they're... Their houses were, you know, blessed. And the Lord said, no, no, you, you got bags, but it got holes in it. They were making all kinds of money, but they couldn't keep anything. They weren't blessed. Why? He said, because you weren't putting me first. He said, go back and start building the house of God. And if you put God's house first, he said, man. And as soon as they started to do that, he said, is there still corn and grain in the barn? Yes. Do you still got wine? Yes. Do you still got oil? Yes. It's a principle. When you put God first, he said, make me. And he said, after make for you and your sons. Look at verse 14. And he says, thus, oh, how many like the thus say the Lord? Yes. He said, thus says the Lord. If you'll do this, if you'll open that seed, if you'll start this new beginning, if you'll let that new river flow. He said, listen, listen, if you put God first, amen, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord shall send rain upon the earth. Yes. Look at the word for fail. I want you to see it, my dear friend. He said, you're not going to. You're not going to be in need. You're not going to be needy. You're not going to be in want or lacking. It's not going to diminish in quality or quantity. It's going to happen for you. Go to the scripture, my dear friend. For thus says the Lord, he said, The barrel shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Look at verse 16 or 15. And what did she do? Right? She went. Amen. See, she was operating in fear. But when he spoke that word to her, and I, this is a woman of faith. She, she said, she was like, here, I'm going to cook and die. And this, is what I'm, this is all I've been thinking about. This, she's been looking at her brook drying up. Yeah. Like, this is a, a collision of two people's brooks drying up. Her meal was drying up and his brook was drying up. But thank God, God is there in the middle of all of this. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? And so she had this whole vision of dying. And then all of a sudden he comes to her and said, listen, you just, you just do what I'm telling you to do. You, you, you just, it's going to be a whole new thing. It's going to be opening of a seed. It's going to grow. You're going to be so blessed. And you're not going to decrease or diminish in any way. It's a, put God first. It's going to be like the river is going to start flowing. And see, she had a choice right there. She had a choice right there. She could have said, forget you. I don't know you. But I know God speaks to you in your heart. And when you get prompted like that, you got to do it fast. Yeah. I know I've got, I've got talked out of many giving blessings because I, I humbly say this. I'll be, yeah, yeah, I felt like I felt led to do it. And you're like, you feel the heat to do it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you go home, you're eating your pasta zoo. You're like, are you feeling it? I'm not feeling it. No. Some, some, you got to catch those moments when, that, when the ground is opened up and the seed is ready to be received. You've got to go. Yes. Yes. You hear me? Got to jump on it. Yes. Got to jump on it. 
She went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she, and she, notice who's the first one here now, not he and she, she. Before I said, give it to me first, right? Then, then feed yourself. Now it goes, yeah, she did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her house. Now it's reversed now. Before, before I said, feed me first. <laughs> now she's, she's operating the blessing of the Lord. Now she's being able to be a blessing and a giver. And she, and she, and she, and he, and her house did eat many days. Yes. Three years. Three years. Almost three years. She's, they're living off the blessing. Three years. Just one more scripture in closing, guy. Can I just give it to you? Hallelujah, we love the Lord. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 6. How many are just ready to go to a new place? Hallelujah. You might be sitting there and go, Pastor Michael, you don't understand. It just seems like it's getting worse. I'm going from the fire pan to the fire. But I want you to know God is working. Yes. You might think you're abandoned, but God's not abandoned you. Right. And during this time, you need to just be open to say, Lord, what, what are you telling me to do? And all of a sudden, thoughts are going to start coming to you. And you go, man, I just got a crazy thought came to me. Whoop, it might not be so crazy. All right? Wouldn't that be so crazy? He goes, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. He says, hey, Paul is talking, he says, you know what? I speak wisdom, the wisdom of God, the deeper things of God, to those that are per perfect. It doesn't mean that you're perfect in the sense of flawless. It means mature, means ripe. You've grown up. He said, we don't, we, with babies, we kind of give the milk. He said, but those that are mature, we kind of give more of a wisdom to you. He says, he goes, uh, he goes, yet not the wisdom of this world, not how the world thinks, not how the world does things, not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that, that come to naught. They don't produce really anything. Verse number seven. He goes, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. It's the wisdom of God that's spoken in a mystery. It's the, it's the hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained for our glory. Look at verse number eight. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew. The princes there, he's talking about demon forces, principalities and powers. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew. They didn't know the wisdom of God. For had they known the wisdom of God, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. What are you saying? When it looked bad for Jesus going to the cross. And the devil's like, good, we're going to kill him. They, they, all his life, they're trying to kill him. He started his ministry. They were going to throw him off a hill. And he just said, okay, it's enough of that. He walked right through the crowd. They could not kill Jesus. They couldn't, the devil couldn't put sickness on him, diseases on him, couldn't kill him. He walked right through the crowd. He said, no man takes my life. I give it up. And so when the Jesus laid down his life as an offering, all the devils in hell are like, great, we're going to get rid of this guy. We're going to get rid of him. Yeah. It's a cross. That's when Jesus prayed, Father, not my will, your will. Take this cup, take this thing. If there's another way, yeah. right? But it was God's will. Wink, wink. Devil thought it was over. He thought it was done. The wisdom of the world looked at it differently. But you know what? What was meant for evil God turned it for good. And if the, the princes of this world knew, they would have never crucified. Why? Why would have never crucified him? It's because you and you and you. He was dealing with one Jesus, one man filled with the Holy Ghost, one child of God, one person that's begotten of the Father. But look, he's, he's, the, he's the, the firstborn among many brethren. We are the, the other side of the cross, risen, raised up, children that are anointed, filled with power, devil under our feet, ready to take on, move on, go on, lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. If the devil would have known, if he would know what's on the other side of some of the things that you and I are being led through, if he would have known some of the struggles that you and I are going through, and he's putting it on it, he's laying it on you, if he'd only know what's on the other side, Peter walking on the water. The woman at Zarephath feeding the prophet of God. I'm going to tell you, your better days are ahead of you. You might feel like you're in the fire, but bless God, God will be right there with you. And just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in the fire, 
They got out. They didn't even smell like smoke. That's the God. You don't have to go through a hard experience and get hard. You don't have to go through a bitter experience and become bitter. You don't have to go through a, a cutting experience and be caught. Listen, you can go through those hard times and come out better on the other side. Are you hearing me? Don't let your past define you. Just know that God's got a future for you. Are you hearing me? Stop thinking about what happened and what didn't happen and what should have happened. Just know God, God is working. Are you hearing me? Ready?